Okay, so we're out here for the day in the New Forest National Park. It's a cold but breathtakingly beautiful autumn day, late autumn. It's nearly the end of November. The temperature is, I don't know, seven, eight, nine degrees. So quite chilly and I will have to keep moving. But I'm gonna spend the daylight hours here wandering about the forest and Heathland to see what I can see. See what we can find and enjoy from nature today. So this is something we only really see at this time of year in the new forest. Pigs being let out to forage for acorns, beech nuts, crab apples, all kinds of things. In fact, this is a crab apple tree here. In fact, I think this might even be the crab apple tree that I've picked from before that had those really sour crab apples on it. And here we are, the pigs are making use of the forage that they can find underneath that tree. Anyway, we're not here to find pigs today. We're here to have a lovely walk in the woods. Now we are following a deer track, not a human path here. And I'll show you how we can be sure of that. These are definitely deer prints here. Quite large ones. So I would say that's probably quite a large stag that's come through here. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to avoid walking and talking at the same time today because I haven't got my gimbal with me. I didn't have carrying capacity to bring the gimbal. And so if I tend to walk and talk, it, the camera does a wobbly thing, which is not pleasant to watch. So I'll try and do the talky bits while we're standing still. There's plenty of opportunity to take a pause and enjoy our surroundings today. So I'm in a part of the forest near Fritham which is actually my favorite part of the New Forest, really. It's the largest area that you can get to in the New Forest where you can walk for a long distance without hitting another road. Although, you can probably hear there is a major road just over the brow of that hill to my left. So you can walk for, I don't know, maybe four or five miles in this bit of the New Forest without hitting another road. That's not a great distance, I know, and people <laughs> People who live in countries with great areas of wilderness will probably be laughing at me right now. But the New Forest National Park, whilst it is a big area of forest, is not especially wild. You can't really get lost here if you walked far enough. If you walk for a couple of miles in a straight line, you'll hit a road. So just over there is probably where we're going to spend a good part of our day today. It's a mixed woodland of Scots pine, oak, beech, other broadleaf trees, a few other conifers as well by the look of it. And there's lots of interesting wildlife, even at this time of year, to be seen in a mixed woodland like that. It's a really nice place to be on a calm, cool autumn day such as this. There's just so much beauty to be found in nature at every time of the year. Whether it's the stark outlines of the naked trees against the autumn sky, or the quality of light filtering through the trees and the dying bracken, or the gentle rustle of the last few leaves falling to the forest floor. There's a lot you can do just to appreciate your surroundings, just by sitting or standing and watching what's going on. Just standing here right now, I've seen a dozen different species of birds flying through the forest. It's just nice to take a break and appreciate things that are going on around us.
Well, thus far, my basket is still empty. But the day is young, it's only quarter past 10. I think now will be a good time to sit down, have a little break, have a cup of coffee. Now part of the objective of trying to find a piece of deer antler today is to make a top for a walking stick. Now you might be thinking, but well, we never see you with a walking stick really. And there's a reason for that. It's because my walking stick is also my tripod when I'm out here in the forest. And so very often if you're watching a static shot of me carving with an axe or making my lunch, it's because my walking stick is stuck in the ground holding the camera. Much easier than lugging a heavy tripod. So, along with my coffee today, I'm going to be trying this, which is the Fedorka wafer biscuit, kindly sent to me. Focus, please. I'm going to be trying this, which is the Fedorka wafer biscuit, kindly sent to me by Nalem27. So, let's open it up and have a look. As far as I can tell, this is a white chocolate wafer biscuit. I'm reliably informed that this has been in production since the communist era in the Czech Republic. Let's have a look. So, yeah, it's just a circular biscuit. It's been smashed up a little bit, but that's because it's that's because it was posted quite a long way in a parcel. So, here we go. Let's have a little bite. So, yeah, it's just a nice it's got like a chocolatey nutty layer in there, I think. Really nice wafer biscuit. Nice, not overly sweet white chocolate. Just very nice balanced taste. That's good.
Now, we've come across an interesting little collection of mushrooms here that I thought at a distance was Trooping Funnel. But it's not, it's clearly smaller than Trooping Funnel and slightly different in shape and form. There's quite a big ring of them actually here. So I don't know what this is, actually it might be something called Common Funnel, but if we don't know what it is, we don't pick it. We'll see if we can look that up when we get home. Now what I've just spotted down here, on the bank of this river, kind of hard to get to, is a whole load of hedgehog mushrooms. Now these are really good eating, so we're definitely going to pick these, but it's a question of how we get down to get them. I think I saw another one just there. No, it's, no, it's just a rock sticking out. So, yeah, well don't worry about that big pile of foam. That is just natural, even though it looks pretty horrific. So, we've got to lean down and pick these mushrooms. Now, there's an old adage that says, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Now, one of the things that's really important to do when you're picking wild mushrooms is just to get the dirt off them while we're out here in the field. Because if you put these in a basket, or even worse, if you put them in a bag, which a lot of, a lot of people seem to want to do, put their mushrooms in a bag while they're out foraging, and you don't brush off this dirt, it will work its way into the gills, or in this case, spines. And it's almost impossible to uh, remove once you're back at home. So it's really worth just spending a minute or two to clean up the mushrooms before we put them in the basket. And I think a basket is better than a bag, just because we can place the mushrooms in there carefully, cap side up. And any dirt that we have missed, will not fall into the gills of the mushrooms. Just worth doing that now because preparing, trying to get that dirt out once we're back at home is inherently more difficult. The trouble is with these mushrooms is also they're very fragile and crumbly. So once we've got dirt worked its way inside them, you lose a lot of the mushroom scraping away at them trying to get it out. Now you may be getting tired of hearing me rant and rave about hedgehog mushrooms but I just happen to think that this mushroom is my favourite wild edible because well for one thing it's almost impossible to misidentify it cooks well it has a fantastic flavour and texture and it's usually free of bugs and spoilage so it's just a superb wild edible fungus. Really good all-rounder for cooking as well. So yeah, always delighted whenever I find this mushroom. It's also quite easy to spot because it's a creamy colour and it stands out a mile against the autumn leaves. Now we have also got here a few yellow chanterelles but they really are pretty sad so I may not actually pick these. They are really past the end of their season so I'll have a wander up this little mossy bank here. We might find some better specimens, but yeah, I'm gonna pass these over probably because despite chanterelles being delicious wild mushrooms, we're doing okay for hedgehogs. And really, I would just rather have quality in this particular case. But it's interesting to see them. I've been to this spot before and I haven't seen them growing here before, so that's a good sign.
Okay, well now this seems like not an altogether terrible place to stop and have a bite of lunch. Let's see what we've got. Okay, lunch today is going to be the cheese and ham pasta sent kindly to me from the Czech Republic by Nalan27. Now, it's Maggie or Maggi. This is a pan-European brand, and we know that. But this one I think has been tailored for the Czech and Slovak market. It's five cheese and ham. We're going to, of course, have some of these lovely wild mushrooms with it. So, I've got my little stove ready. I've got a stainless steel mess tin now. I sent off for a new one because I didn't really like cooking in the aluminium one. It just is a bit too difficult to stir things without scraping the pan and I just didn't like it. So I bought myself a nice new stainless steel one, kind of bento box style. Now the mushrooms, because we went to all that trouble of preparing them when we picked them, need very little preparation other than just breaking up into the pan. I've got some vegetable oil in there which I brought with me. And we're just going to break up all those mushrooms and put them in the pan. So back in a moment. Now already those are starting to smell really nice. I apologise for the sounds of planes and helicopters and all sorts of things you can hear in the background today. There seems to be quite a lot of activity going on in the sky around here. Vintage planes and all kinds of things zooming over. I guess maybe there's some sort of air show going on somewhere. Right, now, as we've seen before with these mushrooms, a lot of moisture will come out of these. And we need to cook all of that off. And then they'll start frying again in that oil. Okay, just had to reconfigure my cooking area a little bit because we had a bit of a breeze coming in and it was just blowing the gas and I was losing too much heat to the wind. Okay, so those mushrooms are now frying nicely in what's left of the oil that's still in the pan, obviously. So I'm just going to give those a little sauté for a little while. Not too long. Don't want to burn them or anything like that. Okay, that'll do. So, I'll just turn the stove off a minute and I'm going to transfer these mushrooms into the lid of the pan because I don't want to cook them inside the pasta recipe. I want to do that separately. So we'll just put these on the lid there and set them aside. They will go cold, but we'll add them back into the hot dish at the end, so it won't be a problem. But you can see that was quite a big pile of mushrooms when it started and now it's just really a portion. So, time to do that pasta. So, instructions are not in English on here. However, I did manage to figure it out. It's really only one sentence there. And I recognize the words for 0.5 liters and five minutes. So, we're gonna figure it out. So, um, right. Now, I haven't got a measuring jug, but I do know that my cup holds 300 mil. So, we're gonna do that once full. So one cup full and two thirds of a cup full is half a litre. So it could be quite a challenge for my little stove to actually boil this up, half a litre of water, but we'll see how we get on. Hopefully it'll be all right. So there's the pasta and sauce. It's just a, a bunch of pasta in there with the sauce powder at the bottom. So we'll carefully transfer that into the pan. Make sure we take our rubbish home with us. And stir it to give it a mix. Make sure that sauce dissolves in. 
The sauce has got a lot of cheese in it, so the, all this cheese powder is probably going to take a little while to dissolve into the, the liquid, especially when it's cold like this. So as that warms up, hopefully that will just dissolve in. Seems like it might not thicken up, but we'll see. I wonder if it's meant to absorb more of this water into the pasta. We'll see how it goes. This little stove is not got as much power in it as a domestic stove, of course. So we might need to cook it for longer. Okay, we are very, very nearly there now. The sauce is up, all starting to absorb into the pasta. In fact, I think we're there because it's starting to stick on the bottom of the pan now. So I think we're going to stop. Just let that stand for a moment. It will continue to absorb and thicken. Well, that's looking really good and it smells fantastic. So let's have a little taste. There's a little bit of ham there, piece of pasta, some of the sauce. It's going to be very hot. It's going to be very hot, but let's give it that a little taste. Cheesy, salty, nice mild ham flavour, really good, and really nice warming dish actually on a cold day like this out in the woods. Mmm, good. So, tasted it as it is. I don't think I could actually, apparently it's got five cheeses in it. It is lovely and cheesy, but I'm not sure I can identify five different cheeses in there, but it is delicious. I can taste blue cheese in there. Um, yeah, it's really good. But let's now add in the mushrooms we cooked earlier. And I'll just stir them through to warm them up a little bit. This will have the added advantage of warming up the mushrooms and cooling down the pasta stew a little bit. But how about that? Doesn't that look good? Mm. Really looking forward to tucking into that. And all it needs now have a, a little sprinkle of black pepper in there. Doesn't need any additional salt and let's get stuck into a bit of that. So let's have some mushroom and a bit of pasta and some of the sauce. See what that's like together. Oh, that was worth doing. Really good. Yeah, so look at that. Lovely pasta in a creamy, cheesy sauce with chunks of lovely hedgehog mushroom. Delicious. So good. So thanks now, M27, for sending this to me. Really appreciating it. On a cold day like today, this has really warmed me up in the woods. So I'm gonna turn the camera off now so you don't have to listen to me eating. And after I've eaten, we'll go for a little wander, see if we can find something else interesting to look at. Okay, walked quite a long way this afternoon and I'm in quite a different bit of woodland now. This is quite swampy and muddy. We might find something different here, or we may just find more of the same. I have actually found another hedgehog mushroom just now, and I've just found another ring of those, well, not trooping funnel mushrooms. Don't know what they are. So yeah, like I say, we don't pick, if we don't know what they are, we don't pick them. So, well, we're starting to lose the light now a little bit, so I reckon we've got probably about an hour of useful daylight. So, we're going to have a little wander around here, see what we can find, a cup of coffee, and then head for home. So there is still quite a lot of fungus about. I mean, and again, I don't know what this is, so we won't be picking it. 
No idea. Could be edible, may not be. Who knows? Try and identify it when I get home if I can. So yeah, we're here. We're kind of in the heart of the New Forest, but as I've said in other videos before, there really isn't any true wilderness here in the south of England. We are in the middle of the New Forest National Park, but as you can hear, just over the, just behind those trees there, there's a major road. And if we walk about half a mile in that direction, there's a minor road, and we can't go that direction because there's a farm. So, yeah, although it is woodland and it is the woods and it's a national park, it's not really very wild. Okay, time for probably the last cup of coffee I'm going to get from my flask. There's a little bit left in that. Oh yeah. And we're going to have one of these strawberry biscuits. Now, people did observe that these things are quite similar to Belvita, but they're definitely different. Yeah, they are a bit like Belvita breakfast biscuits or Belvita soft bakes or whatever they're called. And they're probably made by the same company, I think. Can't tell who that is for now. But they're different, definitely. I went and bought a packet of Belvita after several people commented to the effect that these are the same. So these are different. For, for one thing, they've just got so much more fruity aroma. They are, they've got more jam in them, they're thicker, they definitely are more golden bake as well. And it just tastes great. So I will do a side by side comparison at home I think because I've got one left of the blueberry and strawberry of these and I've got some Belvita and we'll compare them but for me these are very much more fruity much sweeter much more golden sort of bake and just just nicer tasting they've got a nicer baked flavor interesting how different something can be when in theory it's the same product well I think that's the last little speck of sunlight we're seeing just there before the sun goes down behind the hills so I think I'm gonna call it a day it's been a lovely day out here in the new forest I hope you've enjoyed joining me for this walk and this just little ramble and aimless adventure it's been quite nice it's been a very relaxing day so thanks for joining me and I hope to see you again soon.